welcome to another Generative Components tutorial. Today, we'll look at utilizing center lines to generate strings of geometry that can be easily updated based on a single line. Along the way, we'll explore some different methods of placing and manipulating coordinate systems to get the results we're after. So let's get started. For this exercise, I've referenced in a file containing two B-spline curves. If I change this to wireframe and then to front view, you can see there is one that I've drawn flat and one that I projected onto an undulating surface. For clarity, let's just turn off the surface so we can focus on the two B-spline curves. Switching over to the computational design workflow, I select the point tool and click yes and OK to create a base CS. To demonstrate the difference between these two B-spline curves, let's place two range boxes, starting with two points either side of both B-splines. Then we can easily change the Z value for point 1 to minus 5000, point 2 to 5000, point 3 to minus 5000, and point 4 to 5000. This will cover the Z value range of both B-splines and ensure they fall within our range box. One thing to note is range boxes can be used in a crossing method, so they can include geometry that crosses the box, if you have a situation where that is better suited. So dragging in two range boxes, we can link up point 1 and point 2 to the first range box, and point 3 and point 4 to the second range box. With this in place, dragging in two B-spline nodes and changing them to from elements in range, the geometry from the reference file is automatically generated in this file. Dragging in a coordinate system node and changing its method to by distance along curve, I will set the distance to zero so it is placed at the start of the line and link up the curve input to the first B-spline curve node. For the second, I can just right click and copy this node and paste it next to the second B-spline. Then just adjust the input from B-spline curve one to B-spline curve two. I set up the two range boxes and B-spline curves to show the different results that can appear depending on the data that is referenced in. You can see on the first coordinate system, the default position of the Y direction is to the right. If we look at the coordinate system on the second B-spline, the Y direction is now to the left. This would have a huge impact on the resulting geometry if we use this method to describe coordinate systems along both paths. One method of standardizing this is to click on the drop-down for the coordinate system node, and in the up vector input, I will put in the base CS.Z direction. This will force the coordinate system to be orientated so that the XY plane is parallel to the base CS XY plane. If I do the same thing for the second coordinate system, we now have coordinate systems that are consistent regardless of the reference geometry. For now, let's just delete the nodes for the first B-spline curve so we can focus on the second B-spline, and I'll turn off the visibility of the points in the range box. In this example, we will presume this B-spline is the centre line of a landscape path. Along this path, we might want to place some park benches, some drinking fountains, and maybe some light poles. So let's start with the park benches, and I'd like to place those along the edge of the pathway. So to achieve this, first I need to drag in a B-spline curve node and set its method to offset. Linking this up to the B-spline curve and setting its offset method to by distance, the offset point as the base CS, and if we click on the drop down, I can set the input to say a thousand as the distance. Now you can see this has done the offset, but the offset is in respect to the curve axis and is not exactly the direction I'd like for my path. Another approach would be to offset a series of points along the line and generate a new B-spline curve that passes through those. So let's do that. I'll delete the B-spline that I just created and let's change the coordinate system to by number along curve. I'll set the number to 30, the number along option to arc length and the up vector remains on the base CS.Z direction. Now this places 30 coordinate systems along the path orientated to the path in the XY plane but keeping the Z direction parallel to the base CS. So dragging in a point node, setting the method to by direction and distance from origin, linking up the origin to the coordinate system System 2. For the direction, I can place the cursor in the input box and let's select one of the coordinate system axes, which populates the input with the value of that coordinate system. To ensure this point is referenced along all the coordinate systems, I'll delete the indices after the coordinate system 2 text. In this case, bracket 0, bracket, bracket 2, bracket. Clicking on the drop down to access the distance from origin input, I would like this to be a variable. One quick way to achieve this is just to type in the variable name. In this case, path width and then equals and then the value. So in this case, 2000. This links up to a new node called path width. Finally, I might change the input to path width slash 2 or path width divided by 2. So it is the correct distance from the center line. Now we have a series of points offset perpendicular to the path. Let's drag in a B-spline node and change its method to by points. We can then link it up to point 1 and we have a new B-spline curve that is offset in the XY plane. I'll just rename this B-spline to left B-spline. Now we can just copy the B-spline and the points node and paste them below, changing the name of the B-spline to right B-spline and adjusting the distance to minus path width divided by two. And now we have both side profiles of our path. I've found over time that displaying excess coordinate systems and points can have an impact on performance, so I'll just select the coordinate system 2, point 1 and point 2, right click and turn off their visibility. 
The next step to get the benches in place along the path edge is to place some new coordinate systems along the left B-spline. So dragging in a coordinate system node and changing its method to by distance along curve, we can link the input up to left B-spline, click on the drop down and I'll set the up vector to base cs.z direction. For the distance, I'd like to have the benches placed at some sort of spacing along the path. So clicking on the model tab and the functions icon, I'm gonna drag in a series node. This is just a method I prefer to getting a function call with the function text already populated. As this will be my bench spacing, I'll rename the node to bench seat spacing and then click on the drop down to pin out the increment input. The increment for the bench spacing, I'm gonna set that to 10,000. The start input, I'll set to zero. And for the limit, I'll reference the left B-spline dot length. Now you can see we have a series of numbers starting at zero and stepping up by 10,000 to the length of the left B-spline. I can now link this up to the distance input on the coordinate system one, and I have a series of coordinate systems placed along the line. To make it a bit easier in the future, I'll rename this to bench CS. The benches and other objects for this example are just simple objects I created as cells. So next, I'll drag in a cell node and click on the dropdown to actually access the input and library name. In this case, my library is called landscapes.cell inside inverted commas. This could be the full path to the cell library and you can select the dots to open the browser to select the library. In my case, the cell library is contained in the same location as my DGN file, so I don't require a path. The cell name in this case is bench seat inside parentheses. And now I can link the placement up to bench CS and you can see I now have bench seats along the path. They are, however, rotated at 90 degrees to how I'd like them. We could go back and change the cell, however, there is an easy way to fix this using coordinates systems. So let's drag in a coordinate system node and change its method to by rotation about coordinate system. The origin being the bench CS, the coordinate system defaults to base CS, the rotation axis will be the Z axis, and the rotation angle, let's try minus 90. Now it is just a matter of changing the placement in the cell node from bench CS to the new coordinate system one. And you can see here, I have it all backwards and it doesn't appear to be aligning correctly. This is due to the coordinate system in the last step. So let's change the coordinate system to bench CS so that their rotation is relative to their origin CS, not the base CS. And now we can change the minus 90 back to 90. And now I have bench seats facing the path. You can also see they're all centered on the bench CS due to the cell origin. And they are all horizontal, which is driven by the coordinate system we just placed them on. For a bit of tidy up, I'll change the coordinate system one to bench rotate CS and the cell node to just called bench. Now I'd like to place some water fountains next to the benches. So let's copy the four nodes related to the benches and place them above. I'll rename the cell node to be water fountain. I'll also change the cell name to water fountain, the rotate CS to water fountain rotate CS, and the original coordinate system to water fountain CS. And finally, the series will rename to be water fountain spacing. When you copy these nodes, the input pin results to the default. So we have to pin out the increment again. I think for this increment, I'd like it to be a variable so I can change it later without clicking on the node again. So for this, I'll type in water fountain equals 20,000 as I'd like a water fountain for every second bench. You will note I've made a mistake and I've already have a node called water fountain. So the system helped me out and added a one after the name. This is a reminder to me, I should have a variable for the benches as well. So I went back to the bench seat series and in the input, I typed in bench distance equals 10,000. I also renamed the water fountain one over to water fountain distance. So there's some consistencies in the variables. For the last object I'd like to place, I copied the bench seats nodes again and pasted them below, changing the names over to light pole. I created a new variable called light pole distance equals 7,500. And for the cell name, it's just called light pole. The location for the light pole, however, I'd like it to be on the other side of the path. So let's change light pole CS to reference the right B spline. So we need to change the series limit to right B spline length as well. For the final step, it is to change the rotation to minus 90. So the lights rotate over the path. Now there's just one issue in that the water fountain is positioned on top of the bench seat. So we could try and find some spacing that worked with our bench seats, but there is a simple way to offset the spacing. And that is we just need to adjust the start point of our series. So let's put the water fountain distance back to 20,000 and just change the start of the series to 2000. And now we have a water fountain next to every bench seat. We could go one step further and link that water fountain variable to the bench seat variable by including bench seat times two in the water fountain distance. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it at 20,000. So things are starting to slow down a little bit. So let's select all the coordinate system nodes and turn off their visibility. And let's tidy things up a little bit by going to the transactions window, make sure we commit the current changes, and then let's select everything, right click, and click rebuild transactions. This will give us a warning as it cannot be undone. And now we have a nice ordered transaction window. 
So as the final part of this exercise, let's build some geometry based on that center line that will resemble some timber boards. Let's drag in a coordinate system and rename it boards CS and change its method to by distance along curve. As a starting point, I'll put in 5000 in the distance along input. And for the curve, I'll place the cursor in the box and I'm going to select our center line. You can see the input is B spline curve two bracket zero bracket. This is a typical way that geometry comes in through a range box. It is expecting any number of items. So even if there's one, it gets an index. As we did previously, we select the drop down and for the up vector, we'll put in base CS dot Z direction. This will be the center of one side of our polygon we'll be using to create the boards. So let's drag in a point node and change its method to by direction and distance from origin. We first open up the drop down and pin out the distance. The origin will be the board CS. The directions for this point will be the board CS dot Y Y direction. And for the distance, we can reference the path width and divide it by two. With the first point created, let's copy this node and paste it below. We will use the same method, but this time let's set the distance to negative path width divided by two. And this will be the other end of the board. Now we can drag in a new point and again set its method to by direction and distance from origin and link the origin to point five. Click on the drop down and in the distance input, we can use the variable board width equals 250. For now, we can use the direction of boards CS dot X direction. But as you can see, the point now is parallel to the XY plane and doesn't follow the slope of the path. Now this might be good in some situations where you might like steps, but in this example, I like to show the boards that are following the path. So this gives us an opportunity to try a different method of placing coordinate systems. So let's first drag in a plane node and set its method to by parallel to plane at offset distance. And for the plane, we can use the boards CS dot YZ plane. And for the distance, we can just use the board width. Dragging in a point node, we can change its method to at plane curve intersection. Plane being the plane one we just created and the curve will use the center line. So B spline curve two bracket zero bracket. Now we have a point that's sitting on the curve. We can now drag in a coordinate system node and change its name to board rotate CS. And let's change its method to by origin XY points. The origin will be the board CS. The X point will be point eight and the Y point we're gonna use point five. The X and Y points could be reversed, but I'd like to keep them in the same direction to be consistent with the board CS. We can now change the point seven direction to the board rotate CS dot X direction. And now we have a point that's following the center line curve. We can now copy that point seven and paste it below, changing the origin to point six. Another option at this time would be to generate some points that could be offset vertically from one side of the path to create a cross fork. This could be done by copying say points five and seven and using the boards.z direction for the directional input. For this exercise, I'm gonna keep the boards horizontal. Now we have the four points we need for the polygon. Let's drag in a polygon node and link up the four points by typing in into the input box, open curly brackets, 0.5, comma, 0.7, comma, 0.9, comma, 0.6 and close curly brackets. Dragging in a solid node and renaming this to boards we can now link up the closed curved input to the polygon one node we just created, the offset above to 100 and the below to zero. You can see the offset went down. This is a result of the direction I created the polygon in. So we could either change the order of the input points for the polygon, or you can just change the above and below value. For now, this is fine for our exercise. So to make things faster, I'll hide all the construction nodes for this board. Now we have just one board. So I'll open up the functions dialog again and drag in a series node, again, renaming this to board spacing clicking the drop down and pinning out the increment value. So let's start the value from zero and the increment for this will be board distance equals 300. And the limit, let's set that to the B spline curve to bracket zero, close bracket dot length. So this will reference the center line length. This will generate a distance for each of the boards along the center line. Now all we have to do is link up this series to the board CS distance input. Now this did take about one minute to generate. As a bit of a tidy up, I'll move all the variables together and set their color to orange so they're easy to see by selecting all the nodes, right clicking and selecting colorize node. And there we have it, a nice 3D path with some place cells and some generated geometry from a single line. And now the best part is we can go back and modify the original center line. And I've done that in the reference file. Now we can just open the reference file dialog and update the reference file. As you can see here, the center line is now different. All we need to do is click on the home tab and click on update model icon and everything is rebuilt to the new profile. For this example, on my laptop, it took about two minutes, but I can now reuse this script on any center line geometry. Hopefully you'll find a way to incorporate this concept into your next project. Until next time, thanks for watching.